You're listening to When Christians Speak Online Talk Radio, broadcasting out of the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area. Today's voice crying out in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. When Christians Speak is dedicated to lifting up the name of Christ Jesus and spreading the good news. Amen, 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 amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. It, this is Friday Night Joy. I'm your host, Kevin Ray. This is when Christian Speak Talk Radio. We are celebrating our, uh, our third anniversary, amen, uh, in the month of February, amen, that, that uh, we've been in existence and um, we've been doing this thing on Blog Talk Radio, and um, God has truly been a blessing, amen. Uh, and uh, what we can do today Amen. Just probably just give a couple of shout outs and, and <laughs> that kind of thing and just bless God and play a little music. I do have some words um, and direction I want to share with you today. Um, and uh, we're just going there. I'm not going to be before you long, I promise. Amen. Um, but just want to take this time to glorify God. Amen. You know, to magnify him. But truly, this is not about us. This is truly all about him, you know. All about him and everything. He gets all the glory. Amen. So we are excited. Yeah. Three years, y'all. This is a a story behind that, a testimony behind all of this. So we're grateful um, to you, of course, um, to every listener, for every host, every guest, co-host that has been with us. Um, either from the beginning or came, whatever time you came, we're grateful to God for you. We do appreciate you're tuning in. We hope and pray that we're doing um, the calling that God has placed us on us with all the different broadcasts that we do. Um, I looked at the numbers. I think we have about nine separate um, broadcasts that we do on When Christians Speak Talk Radio. I think we're probably more of a network than anything else. But um, we're just grateful, y'all, to be to be able to um, um, do some of these things that God is doing. Amen. I'm going to test a couple of things. I want to make sure my audio is working, you know, got to do that. And um, we're going to just go on. Have some, uh, amen. And it seems like it's a, amen. It's working. Cool. Amen. So what we're going to do real quick, we're going to um, go ahead and play a couple of uh, commercials. And uh, we're going to talk about this thing about when Christmas speak talk radio. And we're going to talk a little bit about our vision um, that God has allowed um, us to see and where we're headed, amen, and want you to keep us in, in prayer. We're just going to talk a little bit, and then we're going to get into some scriptures, amen, amen. We invite you to join us every Tuesday at 7 p.m. for his abounding grace with Minister Vanessa Reed. On Wednesdays at 7 p.m., Challenge to Change, where real transformation begins with you. That's with Pastor Paul Morgan of Chosen Generation Ministries of Richmond, Virginia. On Thursdays, live at 12 noon, join Reverend Pat Randall for Declaring the Finished Work. Reverend Ray and Friends are here on Friday night at 7 p.m. with the joy of the Lord on Friday Night Joy. Sundays at 7 p.m., join Reverend Ray for Bread of Life. And don't forget our monthly broadcast. The first Monday of every month, Apostle Shirley Jones is here for Lifeline at 7 p.m. And every fourth Saturday of the month, Alabaster Box at 7 p.m. with Prophet Carla Johnson. Amen, amen. And listen, we do have another broadcast, man, that we just got started. Amen. Um, We're excited about what God is doing in this young man's life. Amen. Uh, and um, he has just been a blessing, a godsend. And we do want to welcome, um, I call him Evangelist Mac, man, um, to the um, to the broadcast of When Christian Speak Talk Radio. We are excited about you, brother. I'm not sure whether you're listening in, but we're excited. He does a um, broadcast every third Monday called Adoration. Amen. It's every third Monday of the month. I'm so excited about having him. We do have some other people that's coming up, man. I'm telling you, these are some um, dy- dynamic 
and dynamite <laughs> and all the deeds you can think about that. Amen. People of God that um love to worship, love to praise, and have a message that God has birthed. And I, so we do have some other um uh, future hosts that are coming up. We're gonna try to do a little bit of with the young folks and, and the old folks and the, the middle people too. Amen. Amen. But let's go ahead and have prayer. Amen. Father God, we just want to say thank you for today. Thank you for all that you are doing in our life, God. Thank you for your grace and your mercy, God. Thank you for another day in the land of the living. Heavenly Father, we come today, God, just want to give this day to you. We pray that you will have mercy on us, God. Forgive us where we might have fell down and fell short of your glory, God. We pray, God, that you will just look over us, God, and begin, God, to let us know that everything has been nailed to the cross, that we are alive, and we are alive, and we are living, oh, Lord Jesus, because of you. So if there's inner sickness, God, if there's inner diseases, if there's any um, depression, is there anything like God, we pray that through, through this broadcast today, God, that you will begin to deliver it heal, restore, whatever needs to be brought. We do thank you, God, for every single time someone listens to the broadcast, God, for it's truly not about us, but about you. We want you to get all the glory, all the praise, God. We want you to get all the honor. We want to submit ourselves to you, Heavenly Father, and say, have your way. We believe in you. We trust in you. We need you. We love you, God. We uh, we. We just give all the glory to you. We do pray this prayer in Christ Jesus' name. Amen and, and amen and amen. So, amen. So, again, everyone, I'm, I am so grateful um, to all all our different hosts, uh, uh, Reverend Pat Randall, and um, amen, um, that helps me out. She's in charge of the marketing um, uh, for with Kristen speak and everything. So she helps me out a lot. She keeps me on my so, uh, I'm so grateful to every single one of our board members and member and man that um that keeps me I got a lot of people that keep me in check. Huh. <laughs> Amen. I mean I'm so grateful um to all of them man um uh, that have come into my life. Uh, you know, Minister Vanessa Williams, I mean she does the broadcast Amen um his abound and grace. Amen. On Tuesday, uh, you know, uh, of course, you got the Alabaster Boss with Prophet Carla Johnson. I mean, these people are very, the people that we have um, when Christmas week, they are extremely um, godly people. You know, I watch them, I listen to them, and we know them. Amen. Um, um, Apostle Shirley Jones, we get a shout out to her. Amen. Um, amen. Reverend Gwendolyn Dixon. Dixon. Amen. Um, for Midday Glory Prayer, that's the calling number that we do every Wednesday. Amen. Pastor Paul Morgan, amen, for Challenge to Change. I mean, it's just so many that we're grateful for and thankful that they've come, come on. Um, Prophet Monica, that has been a co, co-host with us at the time. And Jackie, Rad, uh, and Jackie Radical Bless <laughs> Williams, amen, that's also been a co-host with us at the time. We thank you uh, for all you guys are doing, people that's operating in the background, people that have done um, some of our sound checks and some of our um, promos. I mean, I mean, I mean, just so many, you know, and everything. So we just want to give your honor to Reverend Francis and all everybody has poured into my pastor, my pastor, um, um, Pastor James Robinson, the Tree of Life Christian Ministry. Dude, you have poured a lot into me, man, and um, everything. And you had patience with me <laughs> and everything. So we're just grateful for all of these people that have just poured and, and saw the vision and was willing to take part in the vision, to make the vision um, take place and go forth and everything. And um, uh, I'm not much, I, I always tell them, look, I'm more of a background person that's being pushed to the front. I still want to be in the background, but I'm grateful, man, to everyone that worked for I'm grateful for every guest. You know, I was looking at um, some of the chief. The, um, the 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 numbers and stuff. We probably have pretty close to uh, over seventy guests that have come on the last three years. And amen. So we're grateful to every. It's just wait a minute to not to <laughs> to sit there the name at this time. We don't want to do that. But, but but you know who you are. You have been a guest on this broadcast and a future guest. There are so many that um, I have on my my list to get in contact with. Amen. To talk with and see if I can get them to come on and everything, and and um, hopefully this year we'll be able to reach out to them and get more of them 
to come out and everything. Um, I mean, we've talked to people that had nonprofit organizations, people that got CDs out, people that talk about health. And this is basically what the vision is that God had given me for When Christmas Speak Talk Radio to be um, a, a network or a platform from different things of the, what the people of God are doing that may or may not and the normal so can get that opportunity to do this. So this is what this is all about, to to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ, to talk about to talk about us being a better um, um, stewardship over the things that God has given us. That's what we want to do. That's what we des- desire to do. And not just on this platform, but on Blog Talk Radio or some of the other platforms that we're on, amen, but to eventually get into some um, television and some other different things and, and everything. And push people. I'm a pusher, by the way. If you didn't know, I like to push people in the limelight that um, that God shows in my path that uh, he allows me to, to see a glimpse of what he's doing in our life. So we like to do that kind of stuff. Um, we can't do, unfortunately, because <laughs> there's only so many days and only, we can't do everybody. We, we, so everything has to be done um, through the Holy Spirit. But we do want to allow some of the people that have been on to come back on again and share a word with you. I mean, we are blessed just to be in the um, in, in, in an environment with these mighty men and women of God. Amen. So those are the things um, we see as far as what's, what's, what has taken place. Um, um, you also time to hear me share, amen, that this took place probably uh, three years ago. And um, I was um, my um, sister-in-law uh, at the time was um, – um, um, Aisha, and then uh, Carissa, Carissa Smart, and she was doing, I think she was doing a broadcast or a co-host on Black Hole Radio, and I began to listen, and, and I said, you know, and I said to God, and I felt a desire in me at that time is to, because uh, I had already gone through the stroke and was going through a lot of other stuff, and I wanted just to give back. I wanted my life, and God allowed me to do just that, you know. Um, I, I am not one that loved doing public speaking or speaking in general. I told you I'm a background person, but um, the vision of it is I wanted to reach out um, to people and I wanted to reach out to people that were hurting, that was going through and after, and stuff like that and tell them about what God had did for me. So it was more of a testimony than anything else. And then it just grew from there. It was more of a testimony of anything, of just sharing um, the gospel of Jesus Christ and sharing the testimony of how far that God had and the different things that God had done for me. So that's where I was at with this. Uh, when I started, it was actually called When Christian. I mean, we were going to post a little short video probably um, either tonight or tomorrow. And you see some of our old logos and everything. So uh, we've come a long way and everything, and I'm grateful um, to God for every single stuff. It's not always been easy. You no, know, there were days that did not want to do it, but there was a press in me because there was a need. And I want to say this to every, every single person that's listening to this broadcast today. You know, what I know you, what I don't know you, I want you to know that I love you with the love of God, truly. And I only want nothing but the best for you. I have a genuine concern for the not only the people of God, but, but, but for those that are going through some things, that those that might not fit the typical Christian type, uh, I'm going to say logo, but the, the typical Christian type bill, you know, and stuff like that. I have a love for you and desire for you that you get to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior like I have. And that's basically what we're all about, trying to share, trying to spread, trying to preach, trying to teach, you know, and not just do it um, through voice or whatever, but also to do it through actions, which brings me to some of the scriptures that I want to share with you on today. Amen. Amen. And they tie exactly into uh, what we're looking at. If you look at our logo, there's a, um, a scripture right about ab- above it. It's coming from Mark chapter 16 and verse 15. It says, he said unto them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And that's basically what we're trying to do. We're trying to preach the gospel to every creature, every man, every woman. Amen. And to not only preach, but to show them the gospel of Jesus Christ. Show them through testimony. Show them through love. And let them know that they're not alone in everything. So this is one of the, the things that, that um, we, we're we doing. Amen. Um, 
I'm going to turn the page real quick, and I want to check out something because uh, we have we have like two websites. We have whenchristianspeak.com, amen. We have also has whenchristianspeak.org, and they both are in um, <laughs> remake mode, amen, and stuff. So God is doing some different things in, in that area too. We do have some apps out, amen. But they also and everything is this year so far is in we doing it to make it better than it was the last was last year, so that we can pre- present to you, our listeners, um, to those that tune into the po- different podcasts or platforms, um, um, a more professional, but yet um, more, something more designed, um, what God would have us do. So we are trying to improve some things, amen, um, and, and all areas, you know, in all, everything we do, we're trying to improve it, trying to get better, and always trying to bring you the best uh, that Jesus Christ is offering um, and, and ministry to you. Amen. So we do have two websites, whenchristianspeak.com and whenchristianspeak.org. Amen. And we're grateful for that. We, like I said, we're in the process of doing some facelifting things there. Um, you can find out a little bit more about us on whenchristianspeak.com. Amen. That's where we have the statement of faith. Amen. We have a page called Christians Against Suicide and Depression, which is also a Facebook page. And then we have the different links that you can listen to us on. And then we also have a link for Amazon.com where you can actually buy things through Amazon.com. And Amazon will pay us uh, a small percentage and then help offset the page. And then we also have a, those that want to have a desire to give, we have a donation page. Because we are, you know, we don't really talk about that a lot. I, I'm not, I think Pat does, but I know I don't. We are, we are listed as a 501c3. Amen. A nonprofit organization. So we appreciate um, those that have a desire to bless uh, to, into this ministry, so that we can push it forward. Okay. And the idea behind whatever you give is is, is going to be it's ministry driven. Amen. And um, that's basically what we're trying to do. But let me go ahead and uh, finish reading. Uh, go back to Mark chapter sixteen. It says, and this is Jesus. Like he said, go. He said it to them. Go he in all the world and preach the gospel to every every creature. And he says. 16 says that he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. So we're trying to get as many people we can, so we kind of speak the gospel of Jesus Christ so they would know that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. Another scripture that, that we have used is coming out of um, Luke chapter 14. Amen. Amen. And let me, I want to read a little bit more about this because this is the story behind this, and we want to make sure we read it um, in, this, in this context. Amen. Okay. Amen. And this let's let's start at um um chapter seventeen. No, I mean um Luke fourteen. We're gonna start a little bit up, I think. Um um Luke fourteen verse seven. This is a message. This is basically what we're trying to do. Also, you know, we don't have all the answers. We're not perfect. We're not judging anybody. We're not doing anything. We just want to preach Jesus. Um. I've had gotten some phone calls or, or through the broadcast and people that want to interact and want to debate whether time, I mean, stuff, you know, listen, we're not doing all that. We don't do that. We don't, we're not going to bait you and all that kind of stuff. But what we will do is always go back to the Bible. Okay. Amen. And stuff like that. Um, and so this is what it says. Luke 14, um, verse seven, it says, he put forth a parable. This is Jesus put forth a parable to those which were bidden when he marked how they chose out the chief from saying it to them. When thou art bidden of, of an inner man to a wedding, sit not down in the highest room. See, this is more like me. <laughs> Less a more honorable man than thou be, be bidden of him. He said, in other words, to go back in the back. <laughs> he said, and he that bade thee, him, him come and say to thee, get this place. And thou begin with shame to take the lowest room. But when thou art bidding, this is me, this is what I'm talking about, go and sit down in the lowest room, room, that when he that bade thee cometh, he may say unto thee, Friend, go up higher. Thou shalt, then th- shalt thou have worship in the presence of them that sit and meet with them. For whosoever exalted himself shall be abased, and who, he that humbled himself shall be exalted. And that's what we're doing, you um, we're not exalting ourselves. And if, we are, if you notice, the people that we have, when Christians speak, we all uh, have, a, have a humility. 
we all, most of us have gone through some things, and God knows he, he had, especially with me, man, he had to do some work, man. You know, there was definitely some a lot of pride there and everything like that. So, but we're grateful to God for everything he's done. You know, 14, 12, so Luke 14 and 12 says, then he said, then said he also to him that bade him, when thou makest a dinner or a supper, call not thy friends, nor thy brethren, neither thy kinsmen, nor the rich neighbors, lest they also bid thee again, and rec- recompense be made thee. You know, in, other, in other words, like don't call people, you know, you know they're going to call you. You know, tip the tag, you know, you have people like that. It says, 13 said, but when thou makest a feast, call the poor, the maimed, the lame, and the blind. Call those that the less are not fortunate, y'all. In other words, they cannot cannot repay you. Amen? They cannot repay you and stuff like that. In fact, you're not even looking for them to repay you and everything like that. And that's basically what, one of the things that I see with us and stuff. We want to reach out, you know. Uh, we have um, some of people that are really in, into evangelism. I mean, major point where uh, but uh, evangelist Mike, like, they're, they're going all across the country. We have people that are doing local evangelism. We have people that are doing that, and we are grateful for God because this is what we're what we're about, you know. Um, we do try to give. I mean, everybody, you know, give uh, to different causes or whatever and thing like that, and everything. And um, that's what we're doing. And then fourteen says, "And thou shalt be blessed, for they cannot recompense thee, but thou shalt be recompensed at the resurrection of the just." See, everything that we're doing, we want, we want, we want our rewards to come from you, Jesus. You know, we want all of that to come from you. It says, when one of them that sat at meat with him heard these things, he said unto him, Blessed is he that shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. Then said he unto him, A certain man made a great supper and bade men, and he and sent his servants at supper at time to say to them that they were never bidden. Come, for all things are now ready. Okay? And it says, um, 18 says, says and they were all with one consent and began to make excuse. The first said unto him, I have bought a piece of ground, and I must need to go and see it. I pray that they excuse they they, they have me excuse. Another said, I have bought five yokes of oxen, and I go to prove them. I pray have me excuse. And another, amen, said, I, I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. So the servant came and showed his Lord these things. Then the master of the house began being angry, said to the servant, go out quickly into the streets, into the lanes of the city, and bring in the hither the poor and the lame and the halt and the blind. And the servant says, Lord, it is done as thou hast commanded, and yet there is still room. And then this is a verse that we use a lot. This is the scripture that we're talking about. And the Lord said unto the servant, go into the hedges and the highways and compare them to come in, that my house might be filled. So I'm going to say that with this. That right now, uh, we, our listening to base, amen, is over in over 137 different countries. Not saying a lot of bragging or anything like that, but the gospel is being preached here. You know, um, lessons are being are being learned here, and we want to touch the heart of men and women. You know, like-minded, whether we ever, whether I see you again or whether we see you again or whether we don't. You know, there's a calling that is going forth. Um, in the world right now, and God is calling forth those uh, ministers, amen, to go forth. He's calling forth you, and he's giving you a mandate to go forth into the hedges, the, the highways and the hedges and compare men and women to come. He's doing, that's what he's doing, you know. You know, you know some of us are uh, going forth not with a lot of uh, money or a uh, statue or whatever and stuff like that. You know, you know, we, we might not be known or whatever the case might be, and we, whatever the case may be, but God is still calling for you to go forward. There is a cry that's going out in the wilderness right now. The people are hurting so much. I mean, all across the world, not just in America, all across the world, I don't care. All across the world, there is a cry, and people are trying to seek answers and everything. And we have the words of knowledge and the words of life, and we have an obligation to go, to go out and get them just that. To go ahead and give them just that. Amen. Amen. Again, you're listening to When Christians Speak Talk Radio. I'm your host, Reverend Ray. This is Friday Night Joy, and we're talking about a vision, you know. Um, we're talking about a vision. You know, every man, every woman needs a vision. We do. You know, there's a vision. That, there's a purpose, and there's a plan that God has in store for us. 
Amen. Let's go ahead and read another chapter. I told you we're not going to be here long. All right. This is coming out of Luke, and you've probably heard this before in Isaiah. And this is what my pastor, when he gets up to preach, Pastor James Robinson, this is one of the scriptures that he uses a lot. And you think about it, we should be in that same mode, okay? He says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has, sorry, Luke 4, 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, hearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recover the sight to the blind and set at liberty that, them that are bruised to preach that acceptable year of, our, of the Lord. That's what we're doing. There is a call. I go back to what I said. It's not just with us, but there's a call, whoever you are, okay? Bishop, apostle, you know, lay person. You might be an usher. There's a calling that is taking place in your life. And what is God is saying for us as the body of Christ is trying to put away all the foolishness and something and begin to focus on him. It's time to remember the uh, the reason why Jesus why we accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we're supposed to be sold out completely to Him. Not saying that we're not listen. Not saying that we won't miss it. Not saying that we won't fall down. Not saying that we won't get angry <laughs> and sin. Not saying any of those things. But to know that when any of those things take place, we always got our advocate with the Father, who is Jesus Christ, that we can come back to and begin and just say, "Abba, Father," you know. But Lord, forgive me. And the reason for that is already been nailed to the cross. Amen. Amen. So that's a, that's another important scripture. Another one I think is oh yeah, uh, First Corinthians. And then we're gonna do this one, and uh, we're gonna take a break. Amen. Let me go back to my my sheet page. All right, First Corinthians nine and four is what I'm looking at. Amen. Nine and fourteen. First Corinthians. 9 and 14, okay? Amen. And this is also important, too. This is not just important to what we're doing, but any kind of broadcast, any kind of preaching that's going on from the pulpit, um, I don't care who you are, I don't care what your title is or whatever, and I'm going to be as blunt. I'm going to read this, and I'm going to be blunt, okay? It says, uh, 1 Corinthians 9 and 14, it says, Even so the Lord has ordained that they which preach the gospel shall live of the gospel. In other words, <laughs> you know, what we're doing, man, what we do, what we say should be the same thing, okay? What we do and what we say this should be the same thing. And again, it's not that we have, have, have arrived at anything like that because there's a dying daily. Yeah, guess what, y'all? Preachers got to die daily too, you know? Probably some more than <laughs> Sometimes probably more than other times, you know, they had to do a lot more dying, dying because they're dealing with uh, dealing with different people, different personality, um, pre- people not always in the same place and all that kind of stuff. So they have to uh, there's a, they have to stay more or less on their face. And like, well, I, like, I want I want to put this out to you to you that if you are a member of the church, I want you to do something for me starting the day. If you don't do it, if you're doing it, that's good. I want you to to intercede on your pastor. Try to intercede for him on at least once a day, okay? Intercede on for your pastor. Intercede on their behalf and everything. Because they are on, if you are under attack and with, with what's going on with you, can you imagine the attack of the enemy on them and, was, and everything? And, and, uh, and maybe they have 10 members, 100 members, 1,000, whatever. Whatever the number is, 10 times or whatever, 10 times more and everything. Because what you're seeing now that's going on, you're seeing a lot of preachers, they're either preachers in particular. They're either committing suicide. They're stepping down, amen, or they have uh, they have fell off the way. So what we need to do and stuff like that, instead of judging them and that, and for what they did, is to know that Jesus Christ died on the cross for all things, okay, and, and to forgive them and to intercede on their behalf, even if it's not your this intercede. This is a season that I think the people of God, God is also calling His intercessors to be in place. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I consider myself to be an intercessor. I mean, I know some of the, um, the, the great ones and everything that they really, man, they pray, you know, you know. But God is calling the intercessors to stand up in the gap. He's calling his intercessors to be on point, you know, and everything. Uh, he's calling his intercessors to pray for those that are bringing, bringing forth. You might not be one that bring the word, you know. You might be one that, again, an example is sitting in the background, but you see the preacher or the or the the uh, the, the lay person 
um, lay, preaching or teaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, there should be something in you that makes you want to pray for them, you know, and to intercede on their behalf and everything. You know, all of us have a part. All of us have the part. And you'd be surprised the power of prayer um, have on a preacher's life, that they know that somebody got their back, an evangelist's life, that they know, or a prophet, or an apostle, or any of the fivefold ministry, that they know that somebody got their back, that somebody is, you know, maybe waking up at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning doing the Jewish watches, and this is something for another day. And I'm praying seriously for them. For them. I'm praying for them. I'm interceding on their behalf, you know, and to let them know that God loves them. See, I don't, in fact, let's do this real quick. Father God, we want to lift up to you every preacher, every pastor, every minister, every reverend, whoever they may be that you have called, Lord Jesus, and you have made for such a time as this. We want to lift up, lift up those Levites, well, even the Levites, those that sing unto you, God. We pray right now that you would give them strength, God, that you would give them strength, God, that you would give them strength, God, that you would encourage our heart. We pray that you would give them dreams and visions of your purpose and your plans that you have. We pray that when they miss it, God, when they fall short of the glory of you, they know that they can just bow down before you, God. They know that you will forgive them, that you will reach for them with an open arms, Lord Jesus. That you have already nailed all those things that they are going through through the cross. We not only pray for them, but we also pray for their families. We pray for those that they are connected to. We pray for those that are <laughs> that make them cry also, God, and for those that make them smile. We pray, God, that again, that you would give them strength. You allow, allow them to be weary and well-doing. But you will tell them, Lord Jesus, today, today, God, to stay the course, to stay focused on the things in you, to stay focused, God, what we may endure for a night, but joy will come in the morning. To stay focused, God, because there is something a greater that's come will take place in their life. Whether they may see it in their lifetime is not really important. But to see that they have, that you allow them to pray is important because all it takes is one soul. The Bible, you say, Lord Jesus, that the heaven rejoice over one soul that is suffering. So we pray in God right now that we know that the, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. So we pray in God that the Lord of the harvest will send laborers, but laborers with a zeal for you, Lord Jesus. Labor was not, a, not afraid of the faces and, the, and of the actions of men, but willing to go forth and speak a word to somebody today. Laborers, Lord Jesus that will open up their mouth and lift up their voice like a trumpet and declare the wondrous work of the Lord. Labors like that, God. Whether they be ushers or whatever the case may be, we lift them up to you. In Christ Jesus' name, amen and amen and amen. Amen. And then Paul, in, in this writing, this is, he goes on and says, but in, in 15, he says, but I have used none of these things, neither have I written these things. That it should be done unto me, for it would be better for me to die than any man should make my glory void. You know, for though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of, you know, for necessity, for necessity is laid upon me, yea, woe is unto me. If I preach the gospel, man, if I preach the gospel not, and that is important, you know, there is a, a factor in, in us and stuff like that, especially those that preach and those that present the word of God, because not all are pastors, or, you know, and some are just teachers, and some are just, uh, or, or, or have an audience of one. Some people, they, when they minister, they don't minister a whole group, they might minister to one person at a time, you know. And everything like that. So, I mean, a lot of times we have a, a tendency to want to be a uh, hundred people, whatever. No, sometimes the best sermon is up to that, that sermon to that one person. Especially that's that sermon to that one person, the person is delivered of their Savior, or accept Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior, and receive the Holy Spirit. Especially if that is the case, you know, and everything. And there's no, there, there, we we should not be willing to be glory because it's not even about us, y'all. It's not. It's not about, it's not even about us, you know. I don't know about you, but I'm in a place my I don't, God, I don't want to, I don't want to go. I want you to have all the glory. I want you to have all of it and everything, you know, because I know that if you get the glory, then things would change, you know. You get the glory and stuff like that. I don't have to worry about pride and all that kind of stuff. As long as I'm constantly pushing to elevate, but 
um, that, that puts the, the envelope and the glory towards you. And keep in mind, it's, it's easy. It's easy for it's easy for us. It's easy for us to to, to, <laughs> to snuff up it because somebody said, "Oh man, you preached good. You did good." And like, "Oh, thank you, thank you very much." It's easy for those things to take place. It is. It's life. It's like we hey, look, we flesh, man. <laughs> those things will come. But immediately what we have to do as people of God, we have to put those things underneath our feet. You know, they have to be underneath our feet. They have to be un- under subjection and everything because the enemy is going to always try to bring that thing to you. You know, it should never be about I did this, but God did it. You see what I'm saying? Amen. And amen. Again, everyone, I, I'm, I tell you, I'm not going to be for you long. And, and, but I just wanted to share a couple of words with you. I wanted to tell to you about when Christian Speak Talk Radio, uh, where the direction. We are, God is doing some great and amazing thing. Like I said, we are celebrating y'all. This is our third year in existence. This started off uh, probably at the time somebody would have probably told me it was more of a hobby. I don't know. But I saw something in it. Didn't feel like I was a, a, um, equipped to do it. And guess what? Still don't feel like it and everything. Um, but I, I love God. I love Jesus Christ. Amen. And the people that I have with me now, man, they are the same. Yeah, We are like, like-minded. like You know, we are like-minded. We love Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. And we want to reach out. There's, a, there, uh, there's a probably, there is, not probably, but there is an evangelism in all of us. You know, in all of us. Robin Pad and all of us, you know. There is. There's an evangelist that want to reach out to people and and help them. Reach out and tell them about Jesus. Don't matter where you're from. Don't don't, don't none of that stuff matter. Don't care. Listen. Don't care about the color of your skin. Don't care. Don't care. You know, we get caught up in all that. Don't care about the color of skin. Don't care where you've been from. You might have been the worst of the worst. <laughs> you know. And everything. Paul said he was cheap among sinners, <laughs> you know. But he was cheap among sinners, and God saved saved him, you know, and allowed him to go out and preach the gospel to the Gentiles. What can God do for you? How much more can God change your life? You know, the history is full of people that was on low end and didn't do that, and you would never thought the matter of it, but they became great and mighty men and women of God. Spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ, spreading his love, you know. They touched the lives of millions. All it takes is one person, you know. All it takes is one person and everything. So, again, like I said, we're not going to be before you long. We just want to share that with you. Amen. We're going to play a couple more commercials. Amen. Um, And then we're going to close out in prayer. We want you to be blessed, y'all. Be blessed. There's so much stuff that's going on in the world uh, we are definitely living in the last days. And, yeah, I know you probably heard that before. But things seem to be getting not good. <laughs> it got to get worse. So we want to encourage you, encourage you. We want to encourage you, press you, press you, encourage you to find a Bible-believing, spirit-filled church that will love on you and disciple you that will help you go, not for your sake, but for God's name's sake, so that you might be sought light and power to somebody so that you might be salt, light, and power. We encourage you to do that. You know, don't know what you're facing. Maybe you almost at your wit's end going through um, depression. I was watching it on the news earlier about um, the person that somewhere uh, west, I guess he went on the shooting spree. All these different things are taking place in our, in our world today. You know, all these different things, and not just in the United States, all across the world, craziness has taken place. And everything like that, because the enemy is upset and he's trying to bring fear into the house of God and stuff like that. All these things, are, and, you know, and we had a place so that we know in whom we believe. We know that Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior. So we need to react in it to that point where we are on our face again to go back to prayer, worship, and praise. Be the salt, you know. <laughs> Be the light, you know. Be the salt and be the light for somebody. Amen. Amen. Let's go ahead and do a couple of um, commercials and we'll be out of here in a minute. Amen. We invite you to join us every Tuesday at 7 p.m. for his abounding grace with Minister Vanessa Reed. On Wednesdays at 7 p.m., Challenge to Change where real transformation begins with you.
That's with Pastor Paul Morgan of Chosen Generation Ministries of Richmond, Virginia. On Thursdays, live at 12 noon, join Reverend Pat Randall for declaring the finished work. Reverend Ray and friends are here on Friday night at 7 p.m. with the joy of the Lord on Friday Night Joy. Sundays at 7 p.m., join Reverend Ray for Bread of Life. And don't forget our monthly broadcast. The first Monday of every month, Apostle Shirley Jones is here for Lifeline at 7 p.m. And every fourth Saturday of the month, Alabaster Box at 7 p.m. with Prophet Carla Johnson. Amen. We also want to continue to lift up. Amen. Um, we have a midday glory prayer with Reverend um, Gwen Dixon. That's every Wednesday at 12 noon. Amen. Um, this is uh, through free conference call. Amen. The number there is 641-715-3580. Uh, the pen is 732-499. We also have a new broadcast with Evangelist Mac called Adoration. It's every third Monday of the month. So we are grateful to God for those things. Uh, we, again, we want to encourage you if you have a desire to um, sow a seed or, or donate to the ministry, you can do that at uh, winchristandspeak.com. There's a donation page. There's a button almost on every page, uh, and we would appreciate it. This ministry, um, amen, um, needs your help, man. You know, um, we're not going to do no begging, not doing all that stuff. Then we pray that God would lead you to give, amen, and everything. Um, basically, I think, that is all I have. Amen. Let's go ahead and um, close out in prayer. I pray that this broadcast has been a blessing to you. We're celebrating three years, my God. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So I pray this broadcast has been a blessing to you. I thank you. I thank you. I, I will, I will all across the world, I do thank you. I pray for you, and I love you. Amen. Father, we thank you for today again. We thank you for the words that were spoken. We pray, God, that, that it may be, Lord Jesus, a bomb in Gilead, because those are the words of you, Jesus. That it may begin to heal, that it may begin to deliver, that it may begin to do whatever is necessary in the lives of your people. We pray for those that are going through some major storms in their life, God. Some storms, God, that they just can't find a way to. Some storms, God, something that may cause them to cry. We pray, God, that you, Lord Jesus, will bring relief. That you, Jesus, will bring, God, a great light. And you will show them the way. That you will bring a peace that passes all understanding, God. That you will allow them to know, Lord Jesus, that even though they might feel like they're in jail or feel like they're in prison or feel like they're in a captive land, that you've already commanded, um, commanded that they build houses, Lord Jesus, and um, get, um, get wives for their son and daughter and wait. For they truly will come out of it, and they will have the victories. God, we pray for those that are being um, martyred, being killed daily, persecuted because of their belief. We lift them, them to, uh, not only to them, God, but we also lift up their families that are going through major things all across the world, Lord Jesus, for being persecuted because they they said that I believe in Jesus Christ, for being um, um, killed because they believe in Jesus Christ. We pray for them, and, but also we pray for those that are doing this type of hurt. We pray, God, that they might see a great light, which is you, Jesus. Allow all of us to be the testimony, God, that they might see you. For we know, Lord Jesus, that some of them, God, will open up their eyes and realize that what they're doing is not like you at all. God, we pray this prayer because we love them and we desire them to know you, Jesus, to know you in your completeness, to know you in all your splendor and wonder, to know you, that you are the advocate with the Father. We pray right now for all of those that are going through. We pray for those, Lord Jesus, that have lost loved ones this year so far, whoever they may be, wherever they might be. They might be going through a spirit of hurt and pain and loneliness. We pray that you bring them a comfort right now in the name of Christ Jesus. We pray for those, God, that are sick, those that, Lord Jesus, the doctors may have given up on and um, told them they don't have much longer. We know that there is nothing too hard for you to do, so we're praying for miraculous healing to take place. We're praying for life and not death, God. 
We pray, Lord Jesus, for families. We pray for those that are going through divorce or are divorced and separated or whatever the case may be. We pray, God, that you, God, will fix it. You know everything. You know things that need to be done. We pray and continue to pray for the youth, Lord Jesus. We lift them up to you right now in the name of Christ Jesus. We have a heart for the youth, God, because they have been exposed to much more things than we can even ever imagine. The enemy is coming, going around like a raging lion, trying to seek how many of them that he can devour, that he can destroy. So, God, we pray to you right now that you would give them the strength to stand and that you would put them in front of the right men and women, God, to guide them, to teach them, to love on them, God, to disciple them, no matter how old or young they may be. We pray, God, that they will live, God. We pray that they will see your glory, Jesus. We pray for them right now. And as always, God, we can continue to pray for every church, every church, God, across the world, Lord Jesus, that believes in you. We pray for a great revival to take place. We pray for those, Lord Jesus, that have been led astray, God, whatever the case may be, may return into their first love. And know that Jesus, that you are reaching out to them today. We pray for the backsliders. We pray for the hypocrites, God. We pray for every Judas that's in our life, God, who which is and always be our stepping stone, God. But we also pray and submit ourselves unto you, that we will continue to be your humble servants, Lord Jesus, not, af- not afraid of anything that the enemy brings to us, God. Not being... Uh, sworn away or uh, torn away, God, because every wave of doctrine that comes in, God, a new thing. But steady relying on the gospel of you, Jesus Christ. Steady studying the word for ourselves, God, that we may be proven, Lord Jesus, studying the word, but also having the word being applied to our life, like more, like more so than ever. We do give you this prayer, and we are grateful. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen and amen. Amen. Hey, y'all be blessed. We should be broadcasting tomorrow. Apostle, Apostle, oh my. <laughs> Prophet Carla Johnson will be with us. Amen. We'll find out later and stuff like that. That will go from there. Um, amen for the Alabaster Box on tomorrow. So stay tuned. Again, young, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Love you, love you, love you. All of the above, all that you've done, all your prayers. Amen. Be strong in the power of the Lord of the Lord. Amen. In Christ Jesus' name. You say-